Welcome back to another tablet review. This time around, it is Chewy's HiPad Plus. It's their new tablet from them. So it runs Android 10. It is an 11 inch tablet with a very high resolution of 2176 by 1600. Sharp looking panel that it's also very bright. And of course, it's the four by three aspect ratio. So this is a bit of an iPad clone here, but you could say a cheap Android version of an iPad clone. So it has a unibody housing, which is actually really quite good. It's high quality, very nice feeling to it. It has a 7,000 milliamp hour battery, type C micro SD card support, all powered by the MediaTek 8183 with four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. So it chips in Chewy's typical brown box, no frills packaging. We get only a USB type A to type C cable and a 10 watt charger. This is the European plug. Charge time is very slow. As you can imagine at 10 watts, it will take well over three hours. It's in this little protective slip. So we have a pre-applied screen protector, which is good because I'm absolutely terrible at applying screen protectors myself. So the glass on top of this, this will just be soda lime glass. It does not have any Gorilla Glass protection, no dragon tail, nothing like that. So they've got a few other specs outlined there. The GPU is the G72MP3. Now there are a couple of cutouts right here at the top. Well, three of them, this is our five megapixel camera right there. Then we have an ambient light sensor and possibly another sensor there too as well, but maybe only one of them is for the ambient light sensor. And let's have a look at the back of this. So it feels very, very good in hand. In fact, I'm gonna give it a bit of a flex. Oh wow, that's really solid. Very, very solid there. So this does have a 7,000 milliamp hour battery inside this. We have five poker port pin connectors for I believe a keyboard attachment, although I haven't seen any information about that. And then right here we do have a 13 megapixel camera and an LED flash. So great thickness and good build on this one. They're using some CNC machining. This is a unibody alloy housing with this matte gray finish to it. Two microphones up the top right here, type C port and our metal power button. Now the thickness, this is 6.9 millimeters and where the camera is, where that sticks out, that then brings it up to about nine. So it does bulge out a little bit, that 13 megapixel rear camera. Now that type C port here, this one, it does not support video out. So there is no HDMI out and there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, sadly. You will have to use a type C to 3.5 adapter, which is a real shame. So down the bottom, absolutely no ports there. On the right side of this tablet, if you're looking at it, holding it in portrait, we've got two volume up and down buttons made out of metal. And yes, it does have a bit of an iPad feel and look to it, doesn't it? Now four speakers here, but it's not actually four speakers. I've tested this out already, so I've kind of cheated. But the lower ones are the only ones that have sound coming out of them on my unit here. I put my ear up to it, I hear sound coming out of this, I don't hear any sound out of that one. And the same goes for this side here too on the left. So sound, no sound out of that. Sound just coming out of this. And our SIM tray there, which, sorry, micro SD card tray. There's no SIM support in this, so only just micro SDs for this. But very, very good build. And it's flexing this again. That is, it's absolutely solid. Very, very good feel to it in hand. It feels really quite premium. So Chewy has done an excellent job with the finish on this tablet. So we have a very good screen in this particular model here, fully laminated. It has over 250 PPI, so very good pixel density, thanks to that 2176 by 1600 resolution, four by three aspect ratio. So does it feel laggy? No, the UI performance doesn't feel laggy. It's not bad at all, it's quite good. So the screen's maximum brightness does top out to be a very bright 400 and 60 nits, that is very, very good. Now you'll see that I've noticed that when I use the toggles, you see this little glitching happening there at the bottom? I don't think that's a hardware issue, I think that's just software. I don't know if it's just my unit that is causing that, it's just one minor thing with the ROM. The other thing to do with the launcher that I don't particularly like is sometimes it's very hard to trigger recent gestures. I've got full screen gestures enabled and they do work well, but right now I wanna to go to recent apps and I can't until I open another app, for example, here, our storage benchmark, and then I can go, you can see, go back to recent, and I even have running in the background, or I did have a game running. Okay, a lot of things running, yeah, I do, there's counter, sorry, Call of Duty in there, not Counter-Strike, and everything seems to be pretty fast and fluid, so that is great there. But more on the topic of that particular screen here, so it is really, really good, fully laminated, 
However, there are a couple of settings that are missing that I will get onto. So touch response has been pretty good. You can see sometimes I do have to go back and tap again. And that's probably because I'm running a few things there in the background just to also test out our performance. So looking at it like here with the display tester, the blacks do look quite good. And it's just that sharpness and overall really high quality build that Chewy's gone with. So look at those blacks. They're not actually too bad at all for an IPS panel. And they're not as deep, of course, as OLED or an AMOLED panel, but they look good. Now, the settings that are missing in display are some very essential to me settings that should always be there. So when you jump in here, you can see that, hang on, where is contrast? Where is the white balance? Nothing is available to us. So you need to use then third-party apps for that which you can get. Now, one of them I have downloaded already, which is called Color Calibrator. There's a lot out there on the market, and then I can adjust those settings. So that's just a minor. The out-of-the-box calibration of the screen is quite good. Now, the ROM is Android 10. We're running. The security patch level is from November, so it's not exactly recent. We're in March now, so I hope Chewy will update that. And yes, they do have a wireless update system and I am on the latest firmware at the time of this video. The HiPad Plus has four gigabytes of RAM. It's in dual channel, 1800 megahertz. So it's low power. That's LP DDR4X. And the available free storage is uh, somewhere on first boot around about 112 gigabytes or so. So it is an octa-core that it's in this one here. So we've got the four Cortex A53s, four of the A73s, and the graphics is handled by the Mali G72 MP3. And later on in this video, I will show you just how well this particular tablet games or not. Is it going to be a choppy and laggy mess? Because when you take a look at the Antutu score here, it's not exactly amazing. The weakness being, yes, that GPU there, only 28,000 points, and an overall score of 161,000 means that, yes, this is a low-end chipset that is powering the HiPad Plus. And here are the internal storage speeds. So we do have 128 gigabyte eMMC 5.1 spec on this and 256 megabytes per second read sequential, 141 write sequential, and then the random reads are 40 megabytes per second. Random writes are 20. This is not actually too bad. So this won't be the bottleneck of this particular tablet. It's the chipset that is the bottleneck, not the storage. If you're wondering, did this tablet have hardware GPS and a compass in it? No, it doesn't. So there's no GPS at all. So don't even bother buying it if you intended to use it for navigation because it's not going to work. So the screen now in landscape just looks really, really good, really sharp. So you're seeing this funny banding on the screen right here or in 4K, you might notice this, that there's these funny lines. It's some analyzing coming through to do with the screen, but trust me, in person, you do not see that at all. There's a very, very nice screen here. Now, there's a little bit of light bleed that comes through just on the corners when the screen is just showing complete black, and it's very hard for me to, to pick it up and show you there. And you don't notice it. It's not really an issue because you're not going to be looking at just black screens, are we? Well, at least I'm not. Now, the auto rotation of the accelerometer, that's detected very quick. And would you believe some of the cheap tablets I just recently reviewed, the ones that only cost about 139 US dollars or 160 US dollars, were very, very slow to respond to that and quite laggy in that aspect, but here it's quite good. So DRM info, what are we going to have with this? Uh, I We can place bets here, you'll know the result. It's going to be level three, and it is level three. So that means Netflix, Amazon Prime Video stuck sadly in standard definition. Now they are here, you can install them, you can run them. Disney Plus as well, that can be installed. But yep, you cannot get anything above just standard definition, which on such a nice screen with such a great resolution and well over, over 250 PPI pixel density there, it's a real shame that we don't have that. I'll take a look now at Google Play Books, just how it will run a PDF file here. So this one is a large PDF file, and I don't even think I have it completely downloaded on the store. No, I do. And the speed of it is okay. So at your normal pace, it's going to be just fine. And it does look really good. Very, very good with this screen. The double tapping, of course, that brings things up to zoom in. And it's very, very sharp. So if you look at the screen closely, you're not really going to see any pixels unless you get really, really close away from it. I'm talking about 10 centimeters close there. And then an ebook, this does look good on this particular screen, no problems there too. So if you swipe down from the top, 
if I can trigger that toggle correctly, we've got nightlight and nightlight mode is what removes and filters out the blue from the screen. So that is good that we have that on board. Flashlight is there too as well. So that's gonna enable that flashlight in the rear. You can just see it coming on at the top there. If you needed that, well, it's there, it's an option. And this is what this tablet is really ideal for. Light tasks, so internet browsing, Chrome, YouTube videos, eBooks, things like that is what this tablet is ideal for. Brief look at YouTube performance. So I'm surprised to see that they do allow us with the YouTube app to run the setting of 4K60, which I'm doing right now. But I can see that it's dropping a lot of frames. It's only around about 10, 15 frames per second here when running at 4K. So if I change this option over now to just make it, I think 1080p60 is sufficient enough. You see that, there we go, things start to run then a lot smoother. But even now I'm seeing it's still a little bit laggy. And let's just go and skip to another place of my video right here. Just to the end. Hopefully this is not lagging. So it's a few seconds to load in. Okay, so that's fine. So 1080p 60, good. But when I stick it onto that, I'll do it again. 4K and you watch when it swaps over to 4K, which will take a few seconds. There we go. Look at that lag coming through. So keep it at 1080p onto our speakers. So it doesn't have quad speakers, even though it looks like it does. As I showed you when we looked at the design of this tablet, they've got the little gap there, but maybe their plans changed that they decided that no, you know, we'll just go with the two speakers. But the good news is they allow, they have a tiny little bit of base and for a tablet, especially the last budget or cheaper tablets I've been reviewing, these speakers aren't too bad. Now they're not gonna be a Samsung Galaxy S Plus or an iPad, no. But for the price of this, they're not bad. And here's a sample at 100% volume. And moving on to a sample of the front-facing camera. This one is five megapixels. And as you can see from this video quality, it's not amazing. It's very, very average. And the audio quality is also being recorded on the HiPad Plus. So it is average quality here to poor. And at least we do have the cameras. If you wanted to use this for Skype calls or Zoom or whatever, the option is there. But I am sure your mobile phone, like I always say, would do a much better job than the cameras in this tablet. Now Call of Duty, this one is on the lowest possible visuals and the high frame rate option. And I have not actually seen any problem at all with any major stutters or lag. It is running surprisingly good. So looking down the scope here, you can move about, you can zoom in and it doesn't lag, no problems at all. Definitely faster than the chipset that I just looked at in the last two tablets, which was the Unisoc T610. At least the chipset in this one, the 8176, 73, sorry, is performing well, I'm able to get kills and no massive frame dip. So that is really what we want. So as long as you keep the settings on the lowest possible visuals for these demanding games, they should be playable on this chipset on the HiPad Plus here. And that brings me on to one of the more important things too in a tablet is the battery life, which is thankfully very, very good in this. So the 12 nanometer low end chip paired up with that 7,000 milliamp hour battery which does take well over three hours to fully charge, by the way, very, very slow charging. Does go for about 10 hours, 11 hours. It's really quite good. So you lose, depending on your screen brightness, of course, but you will be losing about 10% every hour. So that's great. So the battery life, very decent on this. The build quality, really good. That is a huge positive here. This has no creaks or flex. It feels like a premium high quality tablet. The build is, is really that good. Now we only have the two speakers, even though it has what looks like, well, it's got the four grills and I thought it would have the four speakers in there, but no, only two, but not like the typical tablets, or at least the last two tablets I reviewed in the channel, which weren't that good. These ones aren't bad. So the volume is decent. It is loud. There's a tiny little bit of bass. And then the screen, the screen is definitely the star of the show. The slim side bezels, it has a very nice high resolution and it just looks great. There's no contrast adjustment or white balance adjustment in the settings, however, which I hope they can add with software updates. Now, in terms of the ROM, well, it does also need some software updates, I think, because my one's got a bit of a glitch. 
there it is. When I swipe down, I sometimes see, when I swipe down with the toggles, a little bit of colors flashing at the bottom of my screen. I believe it's only software only, the launch is causing it. Now the screen brightness, the lowest screen brightness is that right there, which is, it's actually too bright. Uh, it should be a lot dimmer for me, but I'm not seeing any pulse width modulation flicker. The full brightness, of course, is the very decent 460 nits there, which is great. So you can actually make it out in direct sunlight. Now the launcher has another annoying thing about it. I've got apps running in the background right now, and I swipe up to recent apps, and I simply cannot do it. Now there is no over the air update yet. There's the system on board. So if I want to go to another recent app, I have to select or load another app up, and then I can swipe and hold, and then go over to my recent apps, which you can see are still all there. That is quite an annoyance there. So I will probably be running Nova Launcher until Chewy fix the launcher with a firmware update with this one. So as a tablet that sells for around about 269 US on special and then the normal price of 299, that's a little too expensive, I think, for the kind of spec that's on offer because it is a low-end chipset. Gaming performance is okay on low settings. You saw Call of Duty was just fine, quite smooth and playable there. But don't expect to play the demanding games on high settings because you won't be able to do it with this particular chipset. So all up, it is a good tablet. The build, the screen, the speakers, that is the super positives there. Then the iffy areas that I will mention there as listed all my pros and cons. So thank you so much for watching my video here on the Chewy HiPad Plus.